Scripture text, Matthew 6 5-13. Sermon title, Pray Like This. 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Sermon text. Pray. This is the subject of today's talk. It's a word I've heard countless times. Being mentioned a lot, often means that it is as important as it is. Prayer is arguably the lifeline of the Spirit. But surprisingly, prayer is difficult and difficult. Why? There are many reasons why it is difficult and difficult, but the first is because of lack of interest, and the second is because of not knowing well. The third is because they don't know the importance. This is considered to be the biggest reason. What do you guys think? Today, I'm going to deal with practical prayer, not theoretical knowledge. So in the future, I hope it will be an exciting prayer and a long-awaited prayer. The text of the text is probably the most prayed for in the world. This is the prayer that Jesus taught, which we call the Lord's Prayer. In the first part, he teaches about the posture and composition of prayer, and then he teaches the content of prayer in detail, saying, you should pray like this. And the last content is in parentheses, but I marked it as such because it seems to have been added later. However, it is the same prayer, but in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus' disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray, Luke 11 1. Jesus taught his disciples, who asked him to teach them to pray, a short but abbreviated prayer. The prayer that Jesus taught contains the core content. If you use this prayer as the frame of prayer, you can pray the best. You may think that there are good prayers and bad prayers in prayer. Obviously there is. A good prayer is a prayer that seeks God's will, and a bad prayer is a prayer that seeks one's own will. James 4 2-3 You covet and do not get, and you murder, you are envious and cannot take, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have, because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly, to spend it on your lust. If you ask according to your own will, that prayer will not be answered. So it's a bad prayer. Perhaps among the numerous prayers offered every day, there are not that many prayers that are in line with God's will. This is because there are countless times that we pray without even having the basic attitude of prayer. Let's take a look at that now. If you understand these contents well and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you too will become a person of prayer with power. Are there basic postures in prayer? Don't have do you speak randomly when you talk to other people? Isn't it? There are basic attitudes that you need to have in order to have a conversation. If this is not in place, the conversation itself will not take place. Don't you often say, I can't talk to that person? You guys know the basic etiquette when talking to other people, right? But don't you have the attitude you should have when praying to God, who created the entire universe, rules it, and is your master? Jesus already teaches these attitudes before and after the words, pray like this. Before talking about the posture of prayer, there is something you must know first. Since this is also related to the posture of prayer, let's look at it first. In other words, the role and importance of prayer. Prayer is the lifeline of the Spirit. However, there are those who hate and fear this lifeline. They are Satan's forces that oppose the Lord. Let's see why. The disciples who could not cast out the devil asked Jesus. Mark 9 28-29 When he entered the house, the disciples asked him quietly, Why were we not able to cast out the demon? And he said, This kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. Satan fears and hates prayer because prayer is a lifeline connected with God. That is why Satan's forces interfere in every way so that this lifeline cannot be connected. Satan has many strategies to hinder prayer, but one of them is to keep people busy. It leads to immersion in something other than prayer. It is to prevent them from thinking of God and from having room for prayer. It is the modern cultural media that fuels this. Modern cultural media are Satan's favorite tools. 
For example, Satan indoctrinates people through countless talk shows, dramas, games, movies, and product promotions every day through television, internet, and cell phone devices. We package things that God hates to be regarded as not so, induce people to enjoy cultural life, health, future, old age, etc. It induces you to prepare insurance for various guarantees. After all, people need a lot of money, and one job is not enough, so they work two or three jobs, and housewives also go to work. I get tired and annoyed because I have a lot of work, and when I have time, I want to rest, and I want to enjoy the cultural life that I have not been able to do. Children use computers, mobile phones, games, private academies, numerous television channels, and more. There is no time for children or adults to think of God, much less to pray. The Lord has already spoken. 2 Timothy 3 1-4-4 You know this. In the last days, times of trouble will come when people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. People do not receive sound teaching, and their ears itchy, and they have many teachers to follow their own desires. For today's Christians who live such a busy life, everything is paid impatiently. Prayer is no exception. Pray formally for a moment. I am soothed by a sense of duty that I did what I had to do through formal prayer without time to think about how I have lived, where I am now, and who God is. No matter how many times you pray like this, it has nothing to do with God. The basic posture of prayer in which God is present is, first, a perfect heart toward God, second, knowing the state of one's spirit and physical life before God, third, a right understanding of one's relationship with God and trust that accompanies repentance, fourth, a right relationship with others, and fifth, a sincere and grateful heart without lies and doubts. How hard is it? It is not that prayer is difficult, but the basic posture of this prayer is difficult. If you meet this condition, prayer is not difficult at all. This is because the Holy Spirit will guide you if you have this attitude. Let's see what the Lord said. John 15 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. The condition of prayer that Jesus said is I know the word of the Lord and obey the word completely. These are the basic postures of the five prayers above. These five postures will be explained in detail based on the word one by one in the following words. Remember these five things for now. No, always strive to have this attitude in life. If you live with this attitude, always tell us anything, anywhere, anytime. The Lord will surely answer. Don't forget prayer is a conversation with God. It's never a one-way street where I only say what I want to say. It is to spend time, heart, and soul to listen to God's word, wait for it, and tell it. Don't pray impatiently because I'm busy. When you are busy, pray while working, even while running. If you have the basic attitude of prayer, try to have a conversation anytime, anywhere, anytime. Pray anytime, anywhere. There is no separate place to pray. However, in order to have concentrated prayer, it can be done in a well-grounded prayer room or church hall. Jesus had this position. The Garden of Gethsemane or some other quiet place undisturbed was a place for deep prayer. Luke 22 39. Jesus went out and, as was customary, went to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. Mark 1 35. Before it was still light in the morning, Jesus got up and went out to a solitary place and prayed there. Mark 6 46. After he had said goodbye to the crowd, he went to the mountain to pray. We, too, must have such a place of prayer. In order for us to live, to receive God's grace, and for our families, churches, and nations to live, we must have such a place of prayer. And always think that God is waiting for me to come to the place of conversation. However, as long as you have the basic posture of prayer, call on God anywhere, anytime. God will gladly respond. The basic posture of prayer is not only necessary when praying. It is the basis of faith that fears God. If you do not have this attitude, not only prayer but also your life of faith itself will have no meaning. Now is not the time to live carelessly, and especially not when you are living a life of faith that only imitates watermelons. Without prayer, you will never be able to overcome Satan's forces, and instead you will only be ridiculed. Without prayer, the spirit cannot live, and you cannot live as a Christian. Jesus, the Son of God, also lived through prayer. How much more should we do? How much do you pray every day these days? Could it be that your God is dead? The safest and surest investment for your children is prayer. Nothing is certain about life in old age, health, or happiness without prayer. Remember the five basic postures of prayer. 
Pastor Joseph Parker, 1830-1902, who was a pastor of the British Congregational Church, was a person who emphasized prayer more than anyone else. He was convinced that prayer could change history, community, life and future. He said, Pray hard do you know how to find out if it is or not? The face proves it. There is no beauty of soul in the face of a man who is not daily close to God. This is because the impression given is far from prayer. However, those who are always with the Lord can smell the fragrant flowers in the garden of the Lord. I bless you that your life of prayer will be like the fragrance of a fragrant flower blooming in the garden of the Lord.